I love my central knitting machine, but my biggest issue with it is that the largest flat panel you can make is less than 30 centimeters wide. A common solution is to make multiple panels and then stitch them together. But no matter how neat your mattress stitch is, you still end up with a seam right up the middle of your project. So after much trial and error, I found a way to make bigger panels on the central knitting machine. For this technique, you will need your knitting machine, some yarn, a darning needle and scrap yarn for casting off, card, measuring tape, or yarn and a ruler, pen and pencil and a ruler, scissors and tape, and a crochet hook. I have had success with adding six columns every six needles using this technique, which means I can knit 80 columns on my 44 needle machine, which nearly doubles its capacity. Very exciting stuff. The first step is to measure how much yarn is required for six columns by placing my measuring tape on the pin by needle one and measuring all the way around to the pin by needle six and then adding two needles. I don't know why adding two extra needles works, but when I measured just six needles length, all I could do was four columns. And when I tried with eight needles length, I could do six columns. So for six columns, I measure eight needles and get 15.5 centimeters. So we want to create a template with card which measures 15.5 centimeters when the yarn wraps around it. I measured and cut out squares measuring 7.5 by 6 centimeters and stacked or folded them until it was half a centimeter thick. This gives me 15.5 centimeters around the card. While experiment with this technique, I would place the card at the pin on the machine and then tape it on. This worked well, um, and you may want to do that the first time you try it and see if this technique is for you. I will probably be using this in every project going forward, but wanted something a little more reusable. I made this one with a piece attached that I can sit on top of the pin, and I can also easily move it around the machine if I wanted to add more than one extension per panel. I'll pop a picture on the screen of the dimensions I used to make this. So now we have our extender, we can start using it. For this video, I will only be doing a swatch. So I will be using 12 needles and I want the extension to be in the middle of the swatch. So I'll be adding my extender on pin needle six. So you can place it anywhere except on the edges. Um, I had some disasters when I was trying to extend panels at the edges. Um, so I found six needles between works well. I'm going to use an E-wrap cast on just so the bit we do later will blend in better. When I reach the extender, I will wrap the yarn around it and then continue with my E-wrap cast on. We are ready to knit the first row. The e cast on can be snug, so don't forget to make sure each stitch drops before you continue. Knit as normal until you reach the pin with the extender on it. And line the yarn guide up so it is directly over the extender. Be sure to push down the stitches on either side. Then remove the yarn from the guide. Ensure it's under this needle and then wrap the yarn around the extender and pop it back into the guide and carry on. You may want to place your finger onto the extender just until you've knit a few stitches and then you can let go. Now we go back the way we came. Stopping at the extender, again, place the yarn guide right over the pin. Push down the stitch on either side. Ensure it's under this needle. Wrap the yarn and replace it back in the guide and continue to the end of the row. I'll show you this a few more times so you can see the process.
After a few rows, you may need to just push the yarn off the extender if it doesn't fall off on its own. So I've done a few rows just so you get the idea and it's time to cast off. I recommend casting off each side on its own piece of waste yarn. So I'll drop the needles on this side and then pick them up with my darn needle. And then with a different piece of scrap yarn, pick up this side. When you take it off the machine, don't stretch it out and try not to move it too much. We don't want anything to loosen. So hopefully you should have something like this. You want to lay this out so all the strings are in the right order. You also want to tighten up the edge stitch before you get started. Pick up the bottom line of yarn and twist it to create a loop. Pop your crochet hook into the loop and we're just going to work our way up the lines. So grab the next line. Pull it through. Then the next one. You want to try and keep yourself as close to the previous column of stitches as you can. Once you get to the top, pull the waist yarn through. One down, five to go. I'll be quiet now and you can watch the next few. All done. Any inconsistency in tension should even itself out in the wash, but even if it doesn't, I still think the slightly larger or smaller stitches are a more desirable finish than a seam. I will be experimenting more with this technique, so please subscribe if you would like to follow my journey. As always, if you give this a go and have any tips or suggestions, please comment them down below. I'll see you in the next one. Happy knitting!